In this equation, we have calcium hydroxide plus iron three chloride. So to balance the equation, let's first count all the atoms up. We have one calcium atom, and then we're gonna call the hydroxide here just one item. We have it here and here. And as we'll see later, this is gonna make balancing this equation just a lot easier. So we have a hydroxide here times two. So two hydroxides on the reactant side, one iron, three chlorines. On the product, we have one calcium atom, and then we have three of these hydroxide ions. So we're gonna put a three here. We have the one iron, two chlorine atoms. So this is a lot easier to work with, makes it much quicker to balance, which is important when you're taking an exam. So I think the first thing I would wanna do is I have this odd number of hydroxides. I have three here and two here. Let's get this to be an even number. I'm gonna put a two here. So three hydroxides times two, that'll give us six. And then we have one times two. So we have two iron atoms. Now I could put a three in front of the calcium hydroxide. So I have two hydroxides times three. That gives me six. Those are balanced. And then one times three, that'll give me three calcium atoms. At this point, I guess I'll just put a three in front of the calcium chloride. One times three, that would balance the calciums. And then two times three, that'll give me six chlorine atoms. But that's okay. If I put a two here, three times two, that gives me six. And one times two, that'll give me two iron atoms. This equation is balanced. So you can see it's really helpful to count polyatomic ions as one item if they're on both sides of the equation. Either way, you get the same answer. This is just a lot quicker. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for CaOH2 plus FeCl3, calcium hydroxide plus lead 3 chloride. Thanks for watching.